coming down to the, uh, the part of the talk that I really think is the most important, uh, which is that there are, there are data now which are quite strong that you've got damage that's occurring to DNA at virtually all levels of exposure. And they result in, in damage that is bad, that leads to a lot of these kinds of effects. And what's worse is that this damage is propagated through time. In other words, we get damage in our bodies when we're exposed, but we also get damage that is carried on in our genome. This is a picture of DNA, or a diagram, the double helix. You have, these are the sugar phosphate chains. They are linked by bases. There's one base on each chain, uh, and this is what carries the code. These chains are twisted into a helix, double helix. The helix is again twisted, and then it joins around uh, histones, which are uh, positively charged chemicals, and I'll show you a picture of that in a while, and they form this, these nucleosomes, which are further, this chain of nucleosomes, are further twisted into a helix, which forms this kind of hollow tube, and so you see you end up with a, a helix and a helix and a helix, and a, what I'm trying to show you is that you've got a kind of structure, this is the metaphase structure of the chromosome, but the DNA is a special kind of structure that has this unusual geometry that allows it to pack into a very small space inside the nucleus of a cell. Now, <clears throat> we get errors in DNA because DNA is not just sitting there. I remember when I, when I first got my first exposure to biology, and I guess it was junior high school, the DNA was the stuff that had the genetic information, and it's locked away there until you need it. Well, you don't need it until you have children, because that's the way you pass the genetic information on. That's wrong. You need it when you have children, but you need it all the time, because the DNA tells the body how to make proteins. And you need proteins all the time. And you need proteins when also you need more DNA. So this has to get replicated. Every time your cell divides, when you're growing, especially as a child, the cell has to make another copy. If you, make, if you have to make another cell, you need more of that DNA. So you get errors every time you have protein synthesis during the normal operation and cell division, when your cells are, are uh, growing or when they're replacing damaged cells. These repairs do not occur 100%. Now you get uh, damage, you get deletions, you get repeats, funny kinds of things, all of these happen. When there are too many of them, the cell can't deal with it, then you end up getting uh, cell suicide. There's a special process called apoptosis, which occurs when the cell had just said, I oh, can't handle it. And then you get the uh, secretions and you get the cell being cannibalized in, in, its, uh, in effect uh, by mechanisms inside the cell. Uh, but sometimes the cell, the damage remains. There are benign kinds of changes, and these remain as mutations. And we'll see that there's been research on that that's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, you see that there's evidence uh, in older identical twins. Remember, identical twins are born with the same DNA. And yet, after a short time, they are different. You have a number of differences between the twins. And uh, in autism, uh, children are supposed to have the same uh, kind of DNA as the parents, or at least, uh, you know, uh, some of the father and some of the mother, and yet you find apart from the father and the mother is frequently different in the child because there have been changes that have occurred in the, in the child as a result of exposures. Now, there are also, uh, in, the, in the theory of uh, cancer, uh, everybody points to changes in DNA as being the source of the problem. And uh, the, uh, the paper that I mentioned earlier uh, in connection with uh, power frequency found that if you have deficiencies in your DNA repair enzymes, you more than double the risk of leukemia in children. So that in that one instance, you've got a uh, clear uh, indication that you've got a, a greater problem or greater risk associated 
Now, the other thing is that cancers take many years to develop, so it's a hard disease to follow. It's not like you get exposed to a pathogen and then you say, well, they get the disease or they don't. Uh, the fact is that you, you don't really know. It's something that's in you like a time bomb and you don't know when it's going to explode. Now, the errors that the DNA damage that occurs, occurs as a result of lots of things. It occurs from the chemicals that are in the environment, as you folks know, well know, uh, not only uh, ionizing radiation, but also the non-ionizing uh, EMF. Now, this is a uh, study that's already been mentioned uh, in the, uh, by D.K. Lee at Kaiser Permanente. Uh, they, he, he did a, a, he and a group uh, did their studies at, uh, uh, in, uh, I guess it was in Berkeley, I, I don't remember where the lab was, but the thing is they studied uh, the effects associated with uh, mother's pregnancy and so on. And they found, for example, one of the early results was the use of electric blankets uh, in the first trimester of pregnancy. You increase the risk of miscarriage with a factor of 10 more of magnitude if you were exposed to uh, an electric blanket uh, in the first trimester. Uh, miscarriage also increased. And there, there was a peculiar kind of uh, a dose response, if you want to think of it. It was, didn't really have to do with the total cumulative exposure to EMF, but if, if you really cut the data and saw any time at which there was exposure greater than 16 milligauss, there was, it was like a, uh, a threshold. If you got exposed greater than 16 milligauss, you got a, a greater increase in miscarriage. Uh, this is kind of interesting when you think of the results of the Yang results in connection with childhood leukemia where if you had a deficiency in the ability to repair your DNA, if you have a, an exposure that exceeds a certain level, you obviously reach a point where the body cannot cope with its no, normal mechanisms. So they, there's a kind of threshold at which the body can cope, and if you ex exceed that threshold, you end up with a problem. That's one of the reasons uh, you can't really define a, uh, a probable uh, kind of effect for, uh, you know, for the total population. One of the things that we were finding, you know, in our study, we did studies on a cellular level, just studying individual reactions, the ability of, of magnetic fields to affect uh, reactions in a, uh, an electron transfer reaction. So we were interested in just moving an electron from one chemical to another. But we found that if there was a uh, higher chemical potential that it had to move against, you got less of an effect of the field, which makes, it, makes a lot of sense. In other words, you, you've got to not only deal with the problem that you're getting, in other words, the effect of the field on the uh, electrons that are involved, but the ability of the body to compensate for that effect. And that is an important, an important part of the uh, uh, the equation because a person's condition has a lot to do. We know that intuitively. A person's condition has a lot to do with the way we can cope with the various insults which so the body is subjected to. Now, getting back to Lee's experiments, uh, he had the foresight to see that he had a great population to study. That here were children who had been exposed. He had the record of which the, the, the mothers had been exposed to and the fields that they've been exposed to. And he's now doing follow-ups, and he's starting to publish them. Now, the first one was published in the, uh, this uh, last year, 2011, on asthma. And he finds that there's an increase in the asthma, the rate of asthma, in children of mothers that were exposed uh, as, uh, during pregnancy. And he has now found, I haven't seen the paper, but it's, it's due to be published. It was announced, and I read some of the reports on it. There's a paper that's due out in epidemiology, which shows that there's an increase in obesity in children that, whose mothers were exposed during pregnancy. 
So that here you have, uh, you know, verse, like like the the biblical uh, curse about the, the sins of the fathers being visited on the, on the children, the sins of the mothers, if you want to call it a sin, to be exposed to EMF. The fact is that these things carry through. Not only are you affected as an individual, but you're affected as a fetus. 